Australopithecus afarensis is an extinct hominid that lived between 3.9 and 2.9 million years ago. A. Afarensis was slenderly built, like the younger Australopithecus africanus. A. Afarensis is thought to be more closely related to the genus Homo, whether as a direct ancestor or a close relative of an unknown ancestor, than any other known primate from the same time. The most famous fossil is the partial skeleton named Lucy found by Donald Johansson and colleagues, who, in celebration of their find, repeatedly played the Beatles' song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Localities Australopithecus afarensis fossils have only been discovered within eastern Africa, despite late only being the type locality for A. afarensis. The most extensive remains assigned to the species are found in Haidar, a far region of Ethiopia, including the above-mentioned Lucy partial skeleton and the first family found at the L333 locality. Other localities bearing A. Afarensis remains include Omo, Maka, Fayaj, and Belodlia in Ethiopia, and Kubi, Fora, and Lothagam in Kenya. Anatomy Crania dental features and brain size compare to the modern and extinct great apes. Afarensis has reduced canines and molars, although they are still relatively larger than in modern humans. A. Afarensis also has a relatively small brain size and a prognathic face. Skeletal morphology and locomotion Considerable debates around the locomotor behavior of A. Afarensis. Some studies suggest that A. Afarensis was almost exclusively bipedal, while others propose that the creatures were partly arboreal. The anatomy of the hands, feet, and shoulder joints in many ways favor the latter interpretation. In particular, the morphology of the scapula appears to be ape-like and very different from modern humans. The curvature of the finger and toe bones approaches that of modern-day apes and is suggestive of their ability to efficiently grasp branches and climb. Alternatively, the loss of an abductable great toe and therefore the ability to grasp with the foot suggests a. Afarensis was no longer adapted to climbing. A number of traits in the a. Afarensis skeleton strongly reflect bipedalism, to the extent some researchers have suggested bipedality evolved long before a. Afarensis. In overall anatomy, the pelvis is far more human-like than ape-like. The iliac blades are short and wide, the sacrum is wide and positioned directly behind the hip joint, and evidence of a strong attachment for the knee extensors is clear. While the pelvis is not wholly human-like, these features point to a structure that can be considered radically remodeled to accommodate a significant degree of bipedalism in the animal's locomotor repertoire. Importantly, the femur also angles in toward the knee from the hip. This trait would have allowed the foot to have fallen closer to the midline of the body, and is a strong indication of habitual bipedal locomotion. Along with humans, present-day orangutans and spider monkeys possess this same feature. The feet also feature adducted big toes, making it difficult if not impossible to grasp branches with the hind limbs. The loss of a grasping hind limb also increases the risk of an infant being dropped or falling, as primates typically hold onto their mothers while the mother goes about her daily business. Without the second set of grasping limbs, the infant cannot maintain as strong a grip, and likely had to be held with help from the mother. The problem of holding the infant would be multiplied if the mother also had to climb trees. Bones of the foot also indicate bipedality. Computer simulations using dynamic modeling of the skeleton's inertial properties and kinematics suggest A. Afarensis was able to walk in the same way modern humans walk, with a normal erect gait or with bent hips and knees, but could not walk in the same way as chimpanzees. The upright gait would have been much more efficient than the bent knee and hip walking, which would have taken twice as much energy. A. Afarensis probably was quite an efficient bipedal walker over short distances, and the spacing of the footprints at late only indicates they were walking at 1.0 meters per second or above, which matches human small-town walking speeds. 
Yet, this can be questioned, as finds of Australopithecus foot bones indicate the late early footprints may not have been made by Australopithecus. Many scientists also doubt the suggestion of bipedalism, and argue that even if Australopithecus really did walk on two legs, it did not walk in the same way as humans. The presence of a wrist-locking mechanism, though, might suggest they engaged in knuckle-walking. The shoulder joint is also oriented much more cranially than that in modern humans, but similar to that in the present-day apes. Combined with the relatively long arms a afarensis is thought to have had, this is thought by many to be reflective of a heightened ability to use the arm above the head in climbing behavior. Furthermore, scans of the skulls reveal a canal and bony labyrinth morphology, which is not supportive to proper bipedal locomotion. Upright bipedal walking is commonly thought to have evolved from knuckle walking with bent legs, in the manner used by chimpanzees and gorillas to move around on the ground, but fossils such as Aurora and Tugenensis indicate bipedalism around 5 to 8 million years ago, in the same general period when genetic studies suggest the lineage of chimpanzees and humans diverged. Modern apes and their fossil ancestors show skeletal adaptations to an upright posture used in tree climbing, and upright. Straight-legged walking has been proposed to have originally evolved as an adaptation to tree-dwelling. Studies of modern orangutans in Sumatra have shown these apes use four legs when walking on large, stable branches and when swinging underneath slightly smaller branches, but a bipedal and maintain their legs very straight when using multiple small, flexible branches under 4 cm in diameter while also using their arms for balance and additional support. This enables them to get nearer to the edge of the tree canopy to grasp fruit or cross to another tree. Climate changes around 11 to 10 million years ago affected forests in East and Central Africa, establishing periods where openings prevented travel through the tree canopy, and during these times. Ancestral hominids could have adapted the upright walking behavior for ground travel, while the ancestors of gorillas and chimpanzees became more specialized in climbing vertical tree trunks or lianas with a bent hip and bent knee posture, ultimately leading them to use the related knuckle-walking posture for ground travel. This would lead to a, a far end as usage of upright bipedalism for ground travel while still having arms well adapted for climbing smaller trees. However, chimpanzees and gorillas are the closest living relatives to humans, and share anatomical features including a fused wrist bone which may also suggest knuckle-walking by human ancestors. Other studies suggest an upright spine and a primarily vertical body plan in primates dates back to Morotopithecus bishopi in the early Miocene of 21.6 Maya, the earliest human-like primates, known from fossil remains found in Africa, Australopithecines, or Australopiths, represent the group from which the ancestors of modern humans emerged. As generally used, the term Australopithecines covers all early human fossils dated from about 7 million to 2.5 million years ago, and some of those dated from 2.5 million to 1.4 million years ago. The group became extinct after that time. Behavior Reconstruction of the social behavior of extinct fossil species is difficult, but their social structure is likely to be comparable to that of modern apes, given the average difference in body size between males and females. Although the degree of sexual dimorphism between males and females of A. afarensis is considerably debated, males likely were larger than females. If observations on the relationship between sexual dimorphism and social group structure from modern great apes are applied to a afarensis, then these creatures most likely lived in small family groups containing a single dominant male and a number of breeding females. 
For a long time, no known stone tools were associated with a. Afarensis, and paleoanthropologists commonly thought stone artifacts only dated back to about 2.5 Maya. However, a 2010 study suggests the hominin species ate meat by carving animal carcasses with stone implements. This finding pushes back the earliest known use of stone tools among hominins to about 3.4 Maya. Specimens of A. Afarensis, LH4. The type specimen for A. Afarensis is an adult mandible from the site of Latoli, Tanzania. AL 129-1. The first A. Afarensis knee joint was discovered in November 1973 by Donald Johansson as part of a team involving Morris Tybe, Eve Coppens and Tim White in the middle awash of Ethiopia's Afar depression. AL 200-1, an upper palate with teeth found in October 1974 AL 288-1. The first day, Afarensis skeleton was discovered on November 24, 1974 near Hadar in Ethiopia by Tom Gray in the company of Donald Johansson, as part of a team involving Morris Tybe, Eve Coppens and Tim White in the middle awash of Ethiopia's Afar depression. AL 333. In 1975, a year after the discovery of Lucy, Donald Johansson's team discovered another site in Hadar which included over 200 fossil specimens from at least 13 individuals, both adults and juveniles. This site, AL 333, is commonly referred to as the first family. The close alignment of the remains indicates that all the individuals died at the same time, a unique finding. AL 333-160 In February 2011, the discovery of AL 333-160 in Hadar, Ethiopia, at the AL 333 site was announced. The foot bone shows that the species had arches in its feet, which confirmed that the species walked upright for the majority of the time. The foot bone is one of 49 new bones discovered, and indicates that a. Afarensis is a lot more human-like than we had ever supposed before, according to the lead scientist on the study, AL 444-2. This is the cranium of a male found at Hadar in 1992. By the time it was found, it was the first complete skull of A. Afarensis. The rarity of relatively complete craniofacial remains in the A. Afarensis samples before the discovery of AL 444-2 seriously hampered prior meaningful analysis of those samples' evolutionary significance. In light of AL 444-2 and other new craniofacial remains, Kimball, Rack and Johansson argue in favor of the taxonomic unity of A. Afarensis. Kadanumuu, also called Big Man, this is a partial skeleton believed to be a male. Selim. In 2000, the skeleton of a three-year-old A. Afarensis female, which comprised almost the entire skull and torso, and most parts of the limbs, was discovered in Daikika, Ethiopia, a few miles from the place where Lucy was found. The features of the skeleton suggested adaptation to walking upright as well as tree climbing, features that match the skeletal features of Lucy and fall midway between human and hominid ape anatomy. Baby Lucy has officially been named Selim. Related work. Further findings at Afar, including the many hominin bones inside 333, produced more bones of concurrent date, and led to Johansson and White's eventual argument that the Kubi-4 hominins were concurrent with the Afar hominins. In other words, Lucy was not unique in evolving bipedalism in a flat face. In 2001, Meves Leakey proposed a new genus and species, Kenyanthropus platyops, for fossil cranium KNMWT 40,000. The fossil cranium appears to have a flat face, but the remains are heavily fragmented. It has many other characteristics similar to a Afarensis remains. It is so far the only representative of its species and genus, and the time frame for its existence falls within that of A. Afarensis.
Another species, called Ardipithecus ramidus, was found by Tim White and colleagues in 1992. This was fully bipedal at 4.4 to 5.8 Maya, yet appears to have been contemporaneous with a woodland environment. Scientists have a rough estimation of the cranial capacity of R. Ramadis at 300 to 350 cc, from the data released on the Ardipithecus specimen nicknamed Ardi in 2009.